Shortly after delivering her baby, a nurse momentarily left the newborn unattended, which soon led to a harrowing situation. The echo of the infant's cry permeated the maternity ward's hallways, a sound that usually brought joy and comfort to staff and visitors. Enhancing the celebratory atmosphere, a new life had commenced, yet, amidst the happiness, Irina, the young mother, was engulfed by a profound sense of fear as she was handed her baby boy, gazing at her son. Irina's feelings were tangled, the expected joy was overshadowed by anxiety and fear regarding her capacity to care for her new child, struggling to make ends meet and living in poverty, she felt the weight of her situation heavily, alone, without consistent income or a stable home. The arrival of her son seemed to amplify her challenges, she envisioned a future fraught with difficulties for both her and her child. Feeling a sharp pang of guilt for not being able to provide him with the life he deserved, tears welled up in her eyes as she thought about the sacrifices that lay ahead, endless sleepless nights, constant worry, and a relentless struggle to survive. Seeing her distress, the nurse tried to provide comfort, but Irina was overwhelmed. Feeling trapped and uncertain about how to escape the cycle of poverty and secure a better future for her son, she cried out in the room. Her body shaking uncontrollably as she yelled at the nurse to take the baby away. I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with it. She screamed in desperation, panic evident in her eyes. The nurse, shocked by Irina's vehement reaction, quickly but gently took the baby from her arms. She had never seen such a response from a new mother, but even this was just the tip of the iceberg. No one could have anticipated Irina's next actions, in a sudden gesture. She ripped the four tubes from her arms, wincing in pain as the needles came out, trying to stand, her legs gave out, and she stumbled, her vision blurring from the effort, other nurses in the room rushed to her side, trying to calm her and hold her back, they encouraged her to lie down and rest, reminding her that she had just given birth, however, Irina was completely irrational, desperately trying to break free as she thrashed about her limbs wildly swinging and her voice loudly proclaiming her need to escape. At the hospital, the medical staff swiftly secured her, making efforts to calm her. Although her distress was inconsolable, her body shook from both terror and adrenaline as she fought back, her gaze frantically scanning the room for a way out. She implored the nurses to let her go, despite their attempts to settle her and restore peace to the environment. Her pleas for freedom persisted. She was petrified that staying any longer could lead her to reconsider her initial decision to not keep the child. As Irina continued to resist and sob, the nurses had no choice but to sedate her. They administered a gentle sedative, hoping it would relax her and help her rest. Knowing the dangers of moving too soon after giving birth, they couldn't risk her health. The nurse holding the newborn boy looked at the mother and child with empathy, recognizing the mother's youth. Barely out of her teens, she deduced the absence of a support system, the nurse felt profound compassion for her and pledged to care for the baby until the mother was ready to take over. While the woman slept, the nurse took care of the infant, feeding him, changing his diapers, and calming his cries. She reflected on the severe circumstances that had pushed the young mother to such desperation. When the woman woke up, the nurse was by her side, offering a reassuring and empathetic presence. Relax and listen. She said gently, you're lucky to have given birth to such a wonderful boy, no matter your current troubles, don't give up hope yet, things will get better with time. The young mother began to weep softly, confiding her predicament to the older nurse, no support, no job, and no money to support her child. The nurse offered comfort, urging her to keep her son, cautioning that she might regret giving him up later. The anxious mother then took her baby from the nurse's arms. Looking into his face for the first time, holding back her tears, she whispered, I'm so sorry, dear, before drying her eyes, she had gone through a lot to get to this moment, she named the boy Matt, Irina, now at 19, a young woman lived with her parents in a quaint town close to Moscow, she had fallen for her boyfriend and unexpectedly found herself pregnant, she had previously planned to start college the next year, but the pregnancy threw her plans into disarray. Much to her parents' dismay, upon sharing the news, her father, overcome with fury, cast her out of their house, accusing her of tarnishing the family's reputation. Her mother, tearfully, wondered where she had erred in raising her daughter. Despite her diligent efforts, Irina begged them to reconsider, but her parents stood firm, insisting that she turn to the baby's father for help, holding on to a sliver of hope. Irina reached out to her boyfriend, only to face his rejection and refusal to acknowledge the pregnancy which left her heartbroken and isolated. 
With nowhere to turn, Irina sought refuge in a shelter and resorted to begging on the streets to survive the remaining months of her pregnancy, engulfed in regret and solitude. Nonetheless, she never considered terminating her pregnancy. As her due date approached, the fear of laboring alone haunted her, prompting her to devise a plan, estimating the time left until her delivery. Irina located a church near a hospital in Tula, south of Moscow, and decided to stay in the vicinity until labor began. Irina's foresight proved beneficial when she went into labor two days later and managed to get to the hospital without much trouble. The clinic staff, having noticed her around, quickly sprang into action to assist her. A few hours later, Irina gave birth to a son, Matt, and as she held him, she pondered their future. Saddened by the thought of her son sharing in her hardships, a nurse, who had comforted her earlier, passed by and was relieved to see the end of Irina's tumultuous period. However, three days post-birth, the doctors diagnosed Matt with jaundice, a common condition in newborns that causes yellowing of the skin and eyes. Although it usually resolves within a few weeks and is not severe, Matt required treatment. The doctors reassured Irina that he would recover swiftly and that there was no need for worry, promptly beginning his treatment, undergoing light therapy. He was required to rest beneath a specialized lamp for several hours each day. This method was safe, effective, and free of side effects if conducted correctly. It was expected that the child would recover in a few weeks, though constant supervision was crucial due to the equipment used. The doctor overseeing Matt's therapy delegated the supervisory duties to a junior nurse at the clinic. He explicitly demanded that she continuously watch over Matt and never leave him alone. The nurse agreed to the instructions, and after ensuring everything was set, the doctor left Matt in her care under the lamp. For about an hour, Matt lay under the lamp while the nurse alternated between working on her computer and periodically checking on him. Suddenly, she remembered she had forgotten to submit a report to the hospital's matron, a task she had overlooked because she was preoccupied with monitoring Matt. She berated herself for missing the deadline, knowing the matron would be displeased, nervous about the potential reaction. She considered taking a quick break to submit the report and return immediately, believing it would only take a few minutes. After some internal debate, she convinced herself that she had enough time to quickly handle the report and return to Matt. Assuming nothing would go wrong in her brief absence, however, she couldn't have been more mistaken. Making a snap decision, the nurse hurried out of the room to submit her report, leaving Matt alone for just two minutes. During those critical moments, disaster struck. The light bulb above Matt's crib burst suddenly, scattering glass everywhere. A small spark from the bulb started a fire that quickly escalated, engulfing the lamp. Upon her return, the nurse found the room in chaos and was horrified at the sight. She had only been gone for two minutes, yet panic overwhelmed her as she scrambled to rectify her mistake. In a desperate attempt to extinguish the fire, she threw a nearby diaper over the lamp, but her hasty action only worsened the situation. The lamp exploded again, sending flaming pieces of the diaper raining down on Matt's crib, frozen with fear. The nurse could only watch in terror as the flames spread across the crib. Threatening the sleeping child, her oversight had endangered Matt's safety. Life was on the line and she knew she had to act swiftly to save him. The scene was horrifying as the nurse began to weep and shout for assistance. Quickly, other nurses gathered, all working together to extinguish the flames while someone dialed for the fire department. By the time the firefighters got there, a significant amount of damage had already been done. The fire was put out. And Matt was immediately taken to the emergency room to evaluate his injuries. The doctors were visibly shaken and sympathetic upon seeing the immense pain the infant was enduring. The nurse responsible for his care was interrogated, and the doctor who had instructed her to watch over Matt was the one who questioned her. She expressed deep regret for her negligence and failure to follow orders. Matt's small body had suffered severe burns that covered 75% of it. The flames had severely damaged his tiny organs, and recovery would take months. Despite the odds, he miraculously survived. Though he was in excruciating pain, the hospital was enveloped in a day of mourning as both the medical staff and visitors were overwhelmed by the sight of Matt's scorched skin, which evoked a profound sense of grief. His previously soft and delicate skin was now a horrific sight, covered in blisters and burns. When Irina, Matt's mother, received the news, she fell to the floor, unable to grasp the tragedy that had struck her child, rushing to Matt's side. She was confronted with a sight that chilled her to the bone. She gasped in shock, her gaze locked on the burns that marred her son's body. What have you done to my son? 
she screamed, her voice reverberating through the hospital corridors. She had assumed Matt merely had jaundice, but this was an entirely different and horrifying reality, consumed by confusion and rage. Yurina demanded answers from the medical staff, desperate to understand how such a disaster could have occurred. A few days after the incident, Yurina faced a daunting decision. She realized that Matt's treatment would require substantial medical attention and financial resources she did not possess. Unable to bear the burden of the mounting medical costs while struggling to make ends meet herself, Yurina felt overwhelmed by the gravity of Matt's condition. The thought of caring for a child with such severe burns, particularly while she was still figuring out her own life, seemed too much to handle. With a heavy heart, she made the painful decision to leave Matt behind. She waited until nightfall, when the hospital was quieter, and quietly left Matt's room without looking back, fearful that a glimpse of her son might break her resolve. With a heavy heart, she made the decision to leave Tula and took the earliest bus to a distant town. Hoping to begin anew, meanwhile, chaos ensued at the hospital when it was discovered that Yurina had vanished. The medical team was deeply worried about his prospects, feeling compassion for the young child who had already endured so much. They quietly speculated about his future and who would take responsibility for him. The hospital staff felt a mix of sadness and powerlessness as they treated Matt's burns, pondering what lay ahead for the innocent boy. Soon, Matt's plight was publicized, capturing the attention of the nation through various media outlets. Following the blaze, the police initiated a probe to ascertain the cause of the fire. It was eventually found that a malfunctioning machine, which had not been repaired, was to blame. A hospital director received a sentence of three and a half months in prison once the fire's origin was revealed. A negligent nurse also faced legal consequences. In light of the news about Matt Bay, hospitals, volunteers, human rights advocates, and numerous families stepped forward to offer assistance, many were moved by the misfortune and suffering Matt Bay endured and wanted to help. However, not all intentions were pure. Some individuals hoped to adopt Matt to leverage his newfound fame for donations and other benefits, thus looking for a share for themselves. These people often visited Matt, showering him with gifts and attention, unlike them, Svetlana a frequent hospital volunteer who had developed a deep affection for Matt, expressed a genuine interest in adopting him. Her love for the boy was sincere, and her family also supported the idea of making him a part of their home. Authorities were wary of potential adopters with selfish motives, prompting them to meticulously assess all interested parties and their families. After a thorough investigation and nearly two months of proceedings, they concluded that Svetlana was the most suitable option throughout the adoption process. She remained steadfast by Matt's side, supported by several other dedicated women. It was a challenging period, but eventually, Svetlana received the adoption papers, officially welcoming Matt into her family. In his new home with Svetlana and her family, the boy was cherished and grew up in a loving environment. Throughout his childhood, Matt underwent numerous surgeries to address his injuries. As he grew older, he developed strength and resilience, much to the pride of Svetlana who marveled at her son's ability to endure more hardship than many adults. During his teenage years, Matt found a profound love for painting, a pursuit that would profoundly shape his future. He dedicated countless hours to refining his skills, and it wasn't long before his talent became evident. His portraits of celebrities, in particular, captured widespread acclaim, leading to a high demand for his work from both agencies and galleries eager to represent him and exhibit his creations. Matt's rise to fame was nothing short of extraordinary, marking him as a national sensation in the art scene. His pieces were highly sought after by both collectors and enthusiasts, and he was celebrated as a genius within the art community. However, Matt's accomplishments weren't confined to the art world. He also excelled academically, showing remarkable improvement in his grades. His family, who had supported him every step of the way, was overjoyed with pride. Svetlana, his legal guardian, along with her family, had provided him with a nurturing home, and Matt knew his happiness was largely thanks to their support. Just as Matt's life seemed to be perfectly aligning, an unexpected figure from his past emerged. Irina, his biological mother, appeared suddenly, claiming Matt as her son and expressing a desire to be part of his life. However, Matt was unforgiving. He was well aware of how she had left him alone in the hospital after his accident, and he told Yurina that he didn't need her in his life. He felt that if she had truly cared, she would not have abandoned him as a baby. Now surrounded by a loving family who had his back, he was better off without her. 
devastated by Matt's rejection. Yurina had expected a warm reception but faced the harsh reality of her actions' consequences instead. She realized too late that her decision to abandon him had lasting impacts, and now Matt was forever out of her reach, Svetlana and her family remained his legal guardians, and Matt was content to have their enduring presence in his life. What are your thoughts on Matt's decision? Feel free to share your views in the comments section. Thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.